Hi guys, welcome back to Physics 1.4 KSSM. So we are still on topic 3.0, gravitation. So today we are going to discuss about the second part of this chapter, that is Kepler's law. So you can see this is a picture of Janus Kepler, the one that produced Kepler's laws. Huh? There are three laws altogether and let's get started. Okay, the first law produced by Kepler states that all planets move in elliptical orbits with the sun at one focus. So this statement also known as law of orbits. So you can see this is a sun as a focus for the, for the orbit. So the planet will orbit surrounding the sun in the shape of ellipse. So you can see the diameter is not uniform. The longest diameter, we call it major axis. The shortest diameter, we call it minor axis. So all planets actually orbiting in the shape of ellipse. Okay, so you must be able to sketch eh, or draw an ellipse. So this is how we draw. Okay, first of all, what you do, you need a soft bond, then you place an A4 paper on it. Then you fix two points with a thumb tack. Eh? Like this, eh? this is one and two. Eh? So we have two points with thumb tack. Then you tie a string both ends to the thumb tacks. What you do, take your pencil and then you tighten the tip of the pencil to the string and then you move the pencil along the major axis to form a line eh, that is half of the ellipse and then you continue the same thing on this side. So finally you will have one ellipse. Then you remove the thumb tack, you mark one of the focus as sun. So now we have produced one ellipse eh, to show that orbits for the planet. Okay, Kepler's second law states that a line that connects a planet to the sun sweeps out equal areas in equal times. This are known as law of areas. So you look at here, we have a planet that orbiting surrounding the sun. So as you can see, see here, point A to B and point C to D does not have same length. So what exactly happened along A, B and C, D? For A, B, let's say both will take same time taken one year. So from A to B, for the planet, it will move at lower speed. When it move at lower speed, thus the distance from A to B, A to B uh, will become shorter. So from C to D, the planet will move at higher speed. Actually, for the place which is close to the sun, the, the planet will move faster. So for same time taken, one year, the planet will move at longer distance of C, D. So you can see the distance of C, D is longer than A, B. But according to Kepler, second law states that the area of this sector CD is equivalent to area of sector AB. That's the meaning of a line that connects a planet to the sun sweeps out equal area in equal time. Okay, that one is Kepler's second law. Okay, what is stated by Kepler's third law of planetary motion? Okay, according to the Kepler, the square of the orbital period of any planet is directly proportional to the cube of the radius of its orbit. This one we known as also law of periods. Okay, now you can see the diagram here shows this is a sun as a focus. So surrounding the sun, there are planets that are orbiting surrounded, uh, surround, uh, surround the Sun. So you can see Earth, the orbital period is one year. So you can see for Venus, 0 0.6 years. And then for Saturn here, 29.5 years. So the orbital period is depends on depends on the radius of the orbits. Eh? Because the, the, the longer the radius of the orbit, the longer the time taken for the planets to make one complete uh, so one complete ellipse of motion okay so now mathematically from the what stated by Kepler's third law we can write as the square of orbital period 
period we use t ya yeah? so the square the square means t squared t to the power 2 directly proportional to cube of radius cube of radius means r to the power 3 so we get t square directly proportional to r cube uh, t square directly proportional to r cube a planet which orbits with a larger radius r has a longer orbital period as such planet with up which are further from the sun takes a longer time to complete one orbit around the sun so you can see here saturn 29.5 years you compare the size of orbit eh, compared to earth eh? earth take orbital period one year but saturn takes 29.5 years meaning the orbits of saturn eh, is longer than the uh, radius of the orbit for earth okay Okay, from the Kepler's third law, actually we can produce uh, equation or formula. The Kepler's third law can be formulated using Newton's universal law of gravitation and concept of circular motion. We have discussed in the, in the previous topic about centripetal force and also gravitational force. And we have shown that, we have shown to you that, Centripetal force mv squared divided by r is equivalent to gravitational force g m m divided by r squared. The capital M is mass of Earth and m is mass of the planet. So you can cancel both sides m, the small m, then we get v squared is equivalent to g m divided by r so r both side also can cancel one eh? so simplify then we get v square equivalent to g m divided by r so this one we mark as equation one okay now linear speed of the planet v is equivalent to distance travel in one complete orbit just now orbit is uh, the shape of ellipse actually it's not really ellipse it's quite round so we take distance travel in one complete orbit as the circumference for a circle so 2 pi r and then divided by orbital period is time taken eh, to travel one complete orbit so we mark as t so we have linear speed v equivalent to 2 pi r divided by t so we have equation 2 what we do substitute 2 into 1 so substitute v equals to 2 pi r divided by t into equation 1 then we have 2 pi r divided by t squared equivalent to gm divided by r okay, you can just open the bracket and then simplify so we get we get this uh, formula t squared equivalent to 4 pi squared divided by gm times r cubed so from here you can see pi is a constant, g is universal constant, m is mass of earth is also con constant, meaning the whole thing here are constant. Okay, so when the whole thing here are constant, meaning t square is directly proportional to r cube. So this is how the formula or the relationship for Kepler's third law uh, we. Uh, we can derive uh, from this method. So we have Kepler's third law, uh, this one. So we can use to solve problem involving orbital period and radius of orbit. Okay, now, again, uh, we want to show that how we can produce formula. So simplify the formula, so easy for you to solve problem. So from Kepler's third law, relationship between orbital periods t and radius, we can have uh, we have uh, discussed earlier. So we have this formula. So four pi square divided by g m is a constant. Then we can just replace it with k. So we have k equals to four pi square divided by g m. Thus we get t square divided by r cube equivalent to k. Means the ratio of the square orbital period divided by cube of the radius of orbit is equivalent to constant okay now uh, so uh, from here also we can solve the problem let's say uh, we have two planets have two planets for planet one we mark as t1 and r1 for planet two is t2 and r2 so we get also two equation so like this uh, we just substitute 
okay, uh, for planet 1, T1, R1, okay. So, take equation 1 divided by equation 2. When divided by equation 2, then this constant will be cancelled. So, we get this uh, relationship. The ratio of the period square is equivalent to ratio of the radius cube, okay. Or, like another example, if you have mass and Venus as the two planets, so we also can write as T mass square divided by T Venus square equivalent to R mass cube divided by R Venus cube. So this is how we saw. Actually, this one is like a proportional uh, formula. Let's look at the example. Okay, example 1, figure shows the planet Earth and Mars orbiting the Sun. The radius of orbit of Earth is 1.5 times 10 to the power 11 meter. Orbital period of Earth and Mars is 1 year and 1.88 years respectively. Calculate radius of the orbit of Mars. Okay, let's say we put T1 and R1. It's for Earth, huh? for orbital period of Earth and radius of the orbit of Earth. Then T2 and R2 is for Mars. Okay, then you substitute into the formula. Before you substitute, you must check the unit. Eh? For example, given T1 and T2, make sure eh, the unit used are same. Here is same, eh? year, year. So same unit. Same thing eh? for R1 and R2 also must use same unit, meter, meter. Okay, if they are in same unit, no need to convert to SI unit because there's a cancellation eh, for the unit here. Okay, you simplify, you can get R2 equivalent to 2.28 times 10 to the power 11 meter. So this one is radius of orbit of mass. Okay, okay example 2. So we have a satellite eh, needs to orbit at height 380 kilometer to capture clear images of the surface of Earth. What is orbital period of the satellite? Okay, given radius of orbit of moon. Orbital period of moon also given. Okay, now we want to solve the problems. We want to find what is orbital period for satellite. So we we, may, we must consider two objects eh, in order to use Kepler law, Kepler third law. So here we use moon and satellite. Okay, so for the moon, for the moon we use uh, T2 R2. For the satellite we use T1 R1. Okay, and then we can check the unit. For the R1, eh, radius of orbit of satellite, we need to plus here. This is a satellite given its only height. So meaning R1 equivalent to radius of Earth plus height. So the height must change to meter. Then we get R1 equivalent to this value. Okay, so you must be careful eh, with this one. Okay, the solution, you just substitute all the values in. Then you solve for T1, you get 1.53 hours. So I think you better write again all the values and then try to use calculator to calculate to calculate eh? because involve, involving large value and then to the power 3, sometimes a careless mistake might happen. So you try to check, use calculator to calculate again whether you get the same value or not. Okay. So I think that's all for this topic. So I hope you can sub subscribe, like and tap for more oncoming videos. Support physics teacher. Thank you.